The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us continue on page 148 with the canticle of praise. O oh God, the protector of all who trust in you, without you nothing is strong, nothing is holy. Embrace us with your mercy, that with you as our ruler and guide, we may live through what is temporary without losing what is eternal. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated. The first reading is by Malachi, chapter 4, verse 1 through 2. Malachi, whose name means my messenger, warns that the day is coming. On that day, the evil will be destroyed like stubble in a fire, but the sun of righteousness will shine on those who honor God. See, the day is coming, burning like an oven, when all the arrogant and all evildoers will be stubble, the day that comes shall burn them up, says the Lord of hosts, so that it will leave them neither root nor branch. But for you who revere my name, the sun of righteousness shall rise with healing in its wings. Word of God, word of life. God. We'll now say the, the Psalm 98, and I will read the odd numbers, and the congregation will read the even ones. Sing a new song to the Lord, who has done marvelous things, whose right hand and holy arm have won the victory. Oh, Lord. Lord, you have made known your victory. You have revealed your righteousness in the sight, sight of, of the nations. nations. You remember your steadfast love and faithfulness to the house of Israel. All the ends of the earth have seen the victory of our God. Shout with joy to the Lord, all you lands. lands. Lift, Lift up, up your, your voice, voice rejoice, rejoice, and, and sing. sing. Sing to the Lord with the harp, with the harp and the voice of song. With trumpets and the sound of the horn, shout with joy before the King, the Lord. Let the sea roar and all that fills it, the world and those who dwell therein. Let the rivers clap their hands, and let the hills ring out with joy before the Lord, who comes to judge the earth. The Lord will judge the world with righteousness and the peoples with equity. The second reading is by Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 6 through 13. Some members of the Thessalonian community, because of their belief in the nearness of Christ's return, had ceased to work, living off the generosity of other members of the community. The writer of this letter warns them bluntly that if they want to eat, they need to work. Now we command you, beloved, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, 
to keep away from believers who are living in idleness and not according to the tradition that they received from us. For you yourselves know how you ought to imitate us. We were not idle when we were with you, and we did not eat anyone's bread without paying for it. But with toil and labor, we worked night and day so that we might not burden any of you. This was not because we do not have that right, but in order to give you an example to imitate. For even when we were with you, we gave, gave you this command. Anyone unwilling to work should not eat. For we hear that some of you are living in idleness, more busy, mere busybodies not doing any work. Now such persons we command and exhort in the Lord Jesus Christ to do their work quietly and to earn their own living. Brothers and sisters, do not be weary in doing what is right. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Please stand for the gospel acclamation. Gospel according to Luke. As history moves towards God's fulfillment, there will be frightening signs and events. Before the end, believers will draw strength from their relationship to God and will be given the words they need to testify and to endure without fear. The reading begins. When some were speaking about the temple, how it was adorned with beautiful stones and gifts dedicated to God, Jesus said, as for these things that you see, the days will come when not one stone will be left upon another and all will be thrown down. They asked him, teacher, when will this be? And what will be the sign that this is about to take place? And he said, Beware that you are not led astray, for many will come in my name and say, I am he, and the time is near. Do not follow them. When you hear of wars and insurrections, do not be terrified, for these things must take place. Place first, but the end will not follow immediately. Then he said to them, Nations will rise against nations, and kingdom against kingdom. There will be great earthquakes, and in various places, famines and plagues. And there will be dreadful portents, great signs from heaven. But before all this occurs, they will arrest you and persecute you. They will hand you over to synagogues and prisons, and you will be brought before kings and governors because of my name. This will give you an opportunity to testify. So make up your minds not to prepare your defense in advance, for I will give you words and a wisdom that none of your opponents will be able to withstand or contradict. You will be betrayed even by parents and brothers, by relatives and friends, and they will put some of you to death. You will be hated by all because of my name, but not a hair on your head will perish. By your endurance, you will gain your souls. The Gospel of the Lord. You may be seated, and we will continue with Be Thou My Vision, number 793.
famous last words. On his deathbed, preacher Henry Ward Beecher reportedly said, now comes the mystery. Thomas's, Thomas Edison's last words were whispered, it's beautiful over there. And Steve Jobs, a self-avowed agnostic who declared our consciousness to be a higher power, surprised everyone when it was revealed what his last words were. Assuming an agnostic could not ascend to the heights of eternal life in the kingdom of God, he reportedly said, oh, wow, oh, wow. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Today's gospel reading is a dire warning to wake up. It is a warning of the predominance of evil, a warning that end times are near, so prepare your souls for what is to come. But it is also a promise a promise not to fear, for whatever calamity befalls you, your death will not be a forever death. And it doesn't take too much imagination to compare the similarities of God's word to what is happening in the world around us. Wars, famines, plagues, floods, nation against nation, red versus blue, upper class versus lower class, indulged versus depraved, facts versus misinformation, gun rights versus gun restriction. The battles amongst us and between us is glaringly evident in scripture and we are all enveloped in its grip. Back in 1997, when my husband's hometown of Grand Forks, North Dakota flooded, all but 15 homes in the city of 75,000 were destroyed by water. I thought to myself, God, why is this happening to these good people who have done nothing to deserve this. But what he answered me with was that it was not a punishment or a remand. It was a reminder that what can happen to one can happen to another. So don't consider yourself safe from catastrophe, but instead go forth and toil and do God's work and do not grow weary of doing good. And let me tell you, we need to not grow weary of doing good because it is our responsibility to help those who suffer, to help those whose life is such that they are just weary of living. We've pulled together as a people to survive the pandemic of COVID but there is evidence that there is another on the way. Ethiopia, Yemen, Sudan, Somalia, and Afghanistan are suffering with horrible famine and starvation. And conflict and warfare remains the key component of hunger around the world. Flooding in Pakistan and last summer in Europe have killed thousands. Drought in both America and Europe are creating issues of sustenance along with supply chain issues created by the evaporation of our water highways, such as the Mississippi. Climate change fuels drought which in turn fuels devastating wildfires that engulf homes and cities, costing many lives and livelihoods. The warning signs are everywhere. 
Not only does Jesus tell us to pay heed to the physical warning signs of disasters, but to heed the warning of false messiahs and their persecutions. The egoists that claim they're sent by God implying that they can save both us and the world. Jesus tells us to beware of following those who lie for their own profit. The first reading tells us the day is coming when the arrogant and the evildoers will burn. And as it says in Proverbs, the companion of fools will suffer harm. Someone once asked me what I thought were the three most devastating things to mankind that were ever invented. I thought about it for a period of time, and satisfied with my answer, I responded, guns, plastics, and social media. Guns, for obvious reasons, plastics for the irreparable damage to our environment, and social media for contributing to the breakdown of social standards and morals. But there was another contributor to world devastation that we experience every day to which I failed to recognize, or to be honest, I failed to acknowledge because it hit so close to home. Not earthquakes, not forest fires, famines, or drought, but it is mentioned in every chapter on every page of the Bible, and that is us. It is the evil of sin that inherently lies within us that contributes to the breakdown of relationships, our egos, our pride, our tendency to see others as lesser than ourselves. The evil of greed, the need to possess more and more and more, which inevitably overpowers God's request that we share what we have and we give generously to both the church and those in need. It is the evil in us that creates earthquakes, not of the land, but earthquakes of insecurity we create in others by purposely excluding or gossiping, bearing false witness, lying. We create famines, not of food, but of attachment knowing those who long for social interaction and a sense of belonging, but we pretend we do not see. It is the seven deadly sins personified, and even more, it is apathy. And so God asks us to continue to toil and work until he comes to collect us, but not just to toil and work for ourselves and others, but to work on ourselves. Every day should be an effort to be a better Christian than what we were the day before, to work on ourselves for God. When I worked out on the Pine Ridge Indian Reservation, there was a Lakota gentleman named Gabby that would come in every day and have breakfast with us at the Lutheran Mission. I mentioned to Gabby that I liked to start every day with a brisk walk, but I was warned not to go out alone, and since I was the earliest riser, I just stayed in and read my Bible instead. And Gabby smiled, and he said, that was good. He said, but he liked to start his day Lakota style, facing the east and praying to the great spirit, 
God, in meaning interchangeably that great spirit was God and God was the great spirit. He said that he would review everything he did wrong the day before or things he could have done better and then added that to his morning prayers. As he went about his day, he would occasionally check and ask himself how he was doing meeting those standards which he set in his morning prayers. And I was amazed and impressed. This was a solid, secure, kind man who made every day an effort to be the best person he could be in God's eyes through checks and balances on himself. This man was the example of the work that God asks us to toil for, the work of taking our responsibility as God's representatives seriously. God promises that his faithful will be called to eternal life with him in the kingdom. The warning signs of catastrophes are an indication that the end is near. So God says, be the best you can be and never weary or tire of doing good. Don't get lured into listening or following evil. Stay strong in the word and know there is a place for you eternally. The day will come when we all cross into the next world, when we transition and join God's kingdom. All God's promises will come to fruition, and when it's my turn, I will be there saying, oh, wow, oh, wow, oh, wow. Amen. Let us continue with hymn number 733, Great is Thy Faithfulness. Please stand if you are able and let us together recite the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, 
who was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please continue standing as we say the prayers of intercession. United with your saints across time and place, we pray for our shared world. Reviving God, keep your church active in its mission and ministry. Encourage bishops, deacons, pastors, and lay leaders to risk boldly in their proclamation and fill them with wisdom and endurance for challenging times. Lord, in your mercy, receive, receive our, our prayer. prayer. Renewing God as the Northern Hemisphere prepares for winter. Make us mindful of the ordered beauty of your creation. Teach us to treasure cycles of rest and new life. Help us care for what you have made. Lord, in your mercy, receive, receive our, our prayer. prayer. Loving God, accompany all who make sacrifices for the sake of others. Safeguard first responders and active duty military personnel. Grant peace to veterans and heal any wounds in body, mind, or spirit. Lord, in your mercy, receive, receive our, our prayer. prayer. Healing God, your people cry out to you. Sustain doctors, nurses, and hospital personnel in their tireless work. Uphold mental health professionals and those in their care. May the sun of righteousness rise on all who are sick. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our Receive prayer. Receive our prayer. Please. Uniting God, unite this assembly in its shared mission and ministry for the sake of the gospel. Highlight ways we can better work together and give us patience to work through disagreement. Lord, in your mercy. Receive, Receive our, our prayer. prayer. We also want to remember Linda Holstrom, whom has passed. Let us pray for her and her family. Lord, in your mercy, receive our prayer. Consoling God, abide with all who grieve for loved ones who have died, especially Linda Holstrom. Can comfort us with the promise of resurrection and new life with you. Lord, in your mercy, receive, receive our, our prayer. prayer. Accept these prayers, gracious God, and those known only to you, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. God of eternal life, to you be the glory forever. We give you thanks for James of Jerusalem and all who have fought the good fight, finished the race, kept the faith, and now live with you. Let us pray by singing verse 4, uh, hymn 781, Children of the Heavenly Father. Though God, though he giveth or he taketh, God, his children, never forsaketh, his the loving purpose solely to preserve them pure and holy. 
With grateful hearts, we commend our spoken and silent prayers to you, O God, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. You may share the peace with someone around you. The peace of Christ be with you always. Let us continue with the offering hymn number 879, verses 3 and 4. Blessed are you, maker of all things, as you have entrusted us with all that you have created. Now gather up the dead, nourish us with this sacrament, and send us to those who hunger and thirst. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Savior, amen. The God of peace, who creates all things and calls them good, who makes us alive in Jesus, and who breathes on us the spirit of hope, bless you now and forever. Amen. Let us sing our closing hymn, number 618, Guide Me Ever, Great Redeemer.
thank you for your help. Adam, I uh, plan on being on the profile.